In this video, I just want to explain why, as testers, we might want to learn JavaScript and how that can help us and give you some resources that you can use to work through on your own. They're all free to learn JavaScript. So this is not a video teaching you JavaScript. This is a video telling you why you would want to know it and where you can go to find the information to help you. Hi, my name is Alan Richardson. You can find me at eviltester.com. And I just want to quickly show you here the reasons why we want to use JavaScript. So I have a simple application here and I click this button, click, and the next button appears. I click this button and it says wait and then the next one appears. So this is JavaScript enabled in this application to help me. Now, one of the things I want to be able to do when I'm testing is increase the surface area that I have for pooling information. The more things that I have access to in terms of gathering information, the more I can uh, think through this application, model it, understand how it works and figure out ways to test this. So I'm trying to increase the surface area for pooling information. Now at the moment, we have the uh, GUI. We have the rendered HTML graphical user interface in front of us. That's a, a surface area, it's relatively rich. I have buttons, there are links, there's text that's telling me things. Now, if I use the dev tools, I increase the surface area available to me for gathering information because now I have access to the DOM. Now, in order to understand this, I need to understand HTML. I have access to the CSS. That might give me more information about what might be appropriate to test, what might not. In order to do this, I need to understand CSS and how it works with HTML. In here, I have JavaScript. In order for me to use this as a source of information for my testing, I have to understand JavaScript. And so many of our web applications are um, JavaScript enabled now. They're very JavaScript rich. If we don't understand it, then we don't have access to this information. If we don't understand HTML, then we don't have access to this information. And if we don't understand CSS, then we don't have access to this information either. So we're limiting the surface area that we can use to help us just based on our technical knowledge. So JavaScript can help do that. And when we increase the surface area, what we're also doing is increasing our ability to understand and model it, but also we have different ways of manipulating it. We can now interact with the application at a different level if we understand that. So there are reasons for it. And once you do understand JavaScript, it just opens up a whole new uh, set of areas for working with. You can potentially work around defects in the application. You can incorporate JavaScript into any automated execution that you're doing to potentially work around any limitations in the tool or work around bits of the application that are hard to automate. But to be honest, you won't know all the different ways that this can impact you because it will surprise you once you know it and start applying it just how often you will use this knowledge. So where can we get information? The first place I'm going to recommend is my Test Automation U course. This is a free course on using JavaScript in the browser to automate applications. So it's a very tester focused course using JavaScript and it teaches the basic JavaScript that you need as you go through. And you can do all this within the dev tools and you can actually automate it to create test data to actually automate the application. So this is a, an in-depth course focused on a very small area. Then we have a bunch of books that we can use. Now, Eloquent JavaScript is how to uh, think about JavaScript from a programming perspective, right? Because it looks at the uh, kind of patterns that people use, different uses of it. It does explain the language. It does it fairly quickly, but it's a, it's a really good book to, to go into and look at in more detail. JavaScript Enlightenment is a book on modern JavaScript patterns. So it's, it's focused on updates. So a lot of the books are based on older JavaScript. Certainly my course is based on older JavaScript because it's easier to get a handle for. But as you progress with JavaScript, you might want to um, use more uh, modern features, particularly if you're going to try and write applications in JavaScript. I will include links to all of these resources in the description or in the support and blog post. Speaking JavaScript is an overview of the JavaScript language. So it explains loops, values, everything you can go through. And it's a, just an in-depth language focused book. So this is very good for just getting your head around the entire scope of the language and how we can use it. DOM enlightenment is how we use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM, the document object model. This thing that you saw down here, when we inspect this, 
In this tab, this HTML view, this is the document object model and JavaScript can amend this in massively different ways. And it's how we manipulate the application when we are automating it. So the Dom Enlightenment book gives you all the techniques that you need to explore that in real detail. It's a very detailed book. JavaScript design patterns. This is really useful for when you get to the point of actually writing larger applications, or if you're going to automate the execution of an application um, in Node.js, then JavaScript design patterns will really help you. A lot of the use of JavaScript that we can make, particularly in the console when we're working in here, is going to be tactical. And we don't necessarily need to fully understand design patterns. But when we start reading JavaScript and, and big applications in the DOM or writing large applications or automating uh, from a kind of server side or our desktop, then the JavaScript design patterns will be really, really useful. So the support page for my uh, Test Automation U JavaScript course has more links and more places to practice and more ideas. And I update this page more than I'll update this video and the blog post associated with this. So that's a useful page because I keep adding things to that. The Go Make Things newsletter is very useful. There's an almost daily newsletter on different ways of using JavaScript to work with the DOM. Um, and it's just a, a useful reminder of here's some stuff. It's a drip feed. Here's some things you might find useful, some things you won't be useful at the time, but it'll just keep reminding you JavaScript is a useful thing that we can learn and you'll get the, the tips through your email list for free. So Viv Richards and I wrote a useful JavaScript snippets extension, which you can find on GitHub and you have to install it yourself, but the instructions are in here. And what this does is it gives us a little Chrome extension that we can have in our browser. Here it is at the top here. I click on this. It says, do you want to do some accessibility stuff? Okay, let's have a look at uh, inputs without labels. So it's shown me that this subscribe button here doesn't have any label, potentially an accessibility issue. But more than that, how does this help you with JavaScript? Well, if I look in the console, I can see the actual code that it ran in order to do that job. So I can see the, the simple code, how it's manipulating. I can copy this into the browser. I can experiment with it. And if I want to, I can convert it into a bookmarklet and run it from the bookmarks. All of this is explained on the, the snippets page, but it's basically a tool that shows you in code what it's doing so you can see the effect and you can see examples of code used to achieve them. So I think that's quite a useful thing. And I, I go back and remind myself what JavaScript did I use under different circumstances. And the JavaScript for Cats page is a single page that using the dev tools shows you some JavaScript that you can write. So in the same way that my test automation U course is all based in the dev tools console, the JavaScript for Cats is also based on the dev tools console, but teaches more of the language in a um, relatively simple way of working through it. So you can work through this and get a grasp of the basics of the language. So I'm going to try and suggest a way that you might want to order this. So if you, first of all, subscribe to the Go Make Things newsletter, then you will get a reminder of JavaScript that you can be using. Read JavaScript for cats, because then you can go through that fairly quickly and get an idea for basic JavaScript in the browser. Go through my Test Automation U course, because that shows you specific JavaScript that you can use to help you with testing. And again, it's all from within the browser. And then the rest of it is all how we build up our knowledge of JavaScript with the various free books that are available. So that's one learning path you might like to do. But the most important thing is any information that you get with JavaScript, keep experimenting with it in the console and just organically grow the information. As testers, we have the advantage that we don't need to create big applications or find applications that we can create or run from the server. What we can do is we can use very small snippets of JavaScript to help us with our testing. And that's really what the, the first few items in this list will help you do. So you can slowly, gradually learn bits and pieces of JavaScript that will help you with your work. If you find this useful, then remember to subscribe to the channel or go off to eviltester.com, subscribe to my newsletter or blog, and you'll find more articles over there. And all the links to all the books and resources are in the description for this video.